What is that little thing that makes ChatGPT so powerful? Until recently, I thought I knew. But then I learned what you are about to learn from this video. This is an alien, and his name is Chad. At least that's what his badge says. And he looks very much like a transformer. Um, so he was sent here on Earth, uh, but during landing, something terribly wrong happened, and his spaceship crashed, uh, and all he has uh, is basically just a strange-looking box with a dial and a button. And the label on the dial says dimension, and the label on the button says attention. And that's it. Oh, and uh, he also has, uh, uh, that box came with a manual, and uh, the title of the manual is uh, Attention is all you need. Chad starts walking around, just wandering around, trying to figure out where, like, what this place is. And before long, he walks into a very strange place. It is like a, a, a huge square full of humans, few, full of people. There is still one big problem, a huge problem. Humans do not understand him. And he does not understand humans, not a single word. So what are you going to do? How are you going to survive if you cannot communicate? Well, Chad looks around, sees a manual, opens the manual, and the manual says, press the attention button. And Chad presses it. And that's when something remarkable happens. Once he started, uh, presses the button. Each person in that crowd calls each other person in that crowd and asks the same question. So it calls one by one and asks the same question. Do I know you? And then receives an answer. And the answers were from a range of, uh, let's say, hey, mate, it's the first time I see you. I've never seen you before. To the, of course I know you. you. You're like my closest relative. You're like my brother. And those uh, people who turned out to know each other, they receive uh, some sort of a certificate. It's like a stamp, like, hey, these two, they know each other. A quick side note for those of us who are technical and who are in the know. So this is the main formula, transformer formula, and uh, it, it comes from that manual. Remember when those uh, guys, when they were asking each other, like, hey, who are you? So that part is that question. It's actually Q here in the formula. It stands for query. And then the answer was coming. And the answer is K. And K stands for keys, well, the answer. And then the certificate was coming. And the certificate was saying, like, hey, these two, they know each other. Uh, so that's V. And V stands for value. And the rest of the, uh, this beautification in this formula, this is just to make sure that these matrices, that they multiply each other nicely. So it's, for us right now, it's not important. But what is important is that attention equals query times keys times value. It is basically attention equals question times answer times certificate. Have you ever been on a large gathering where most people don't know each other? It's like some sort of a conference where during breaks people get pushed into one big room and they are forced to mingle with each other, they are forced to talk to each other. Oh, that dreadful, meaningless small talk where you have to pretend that you care what the other person says. So each time when Chad pressed that attention button, it was like each person initiated a small talk and asked a question and then listened to the answer. Um, and you know what happens then? So when Chad received all those certificates, and certificates again were given when these two people had something in common, when they knew each other. So when Chad looked at those certificates, it turned out that that huge crowd, that homogeneous mass of people, actually consists of complex networks uh, of people who were connected in one way uh, or another. It was like a star constellations. So it turned out that that attention button, it was to make those people to talk to each other and find those connections, find those constellations. But our friend Chad still couldn't understand them. So he, he still was clueless. And that's when he decided to turn the dial, to turn that spindle. So Chad turned the spindle and pressed that button again, the attention button. 
and the small talk started all over again. But this time, something was different. This time, they talked about something else. Like, wow, it turned out that that spindle, that dial, it was needed to change the subject of uh, what people were talking about. The spindle changed the subject of the small talk. It was like if you turn it a notch and people start a small talk about something like, say, politics. And then you can see interesting patterns. For example, you can see that there are two main political parties, like Republicans and uh, Democrats. Then you turn that spindle a notch and it does a turn of the dial. You press the button and you see that families are out there because they talk about families. Another turn and we see vegans and non-vegans, uh, fans of daughter computer game, like sport fans and so on, like endlessly. Endless, endless constellations of them. So changing that frequency reveals how many different ways are out there, uh, how many different ways in which we can slice any group of people. Here, another side note for those of us who are technical. So this dial, it is nothing else but dimensions. It's right here in the denominator of the formula. So chat GPT-3 had, for example, about 12,000 different dimensions. Um, let's say if we take a cube, or just a regular cube, cube has three dimensions, left, right, uh, up, down, uh, forward, and back. But this attention tool, it has 12,000 dimensions. So you turn uh, that spindle, you turn the dial, and you select the subject from 12,000 subjects. And then you press the button and you start a small talk. So people begin to, to, to talk to each other on this subject. And this is how you see the connections between them, between the people. You see structures, you see um, how these people are no longer a crowd. You can see very complex multi-dimensional structures to appear, uh, like relationships that are hidden in this crowd. Wow, said Chad, this is interesting. And then he saw this, a book. Chad pointed the tool to the book and it turned out that text and crowds, they are the same. Words work exactly the same way as people do. It is like words can understand if uh, other words, uh, other words anywhere in the text, if they're related to them or not. It was as if each word uh, can send uh, a query, a question to each other word asking like, hey, do I know you? Are you related to me? And then that other word, it replies like, hey, of course, mate, I'm an adjective that modifies you. So that was a, a, a question, a Q, a query, and an answer, a key, a K. And if they're related, they get a certificate, they get that V. And in that example with an adjective and uh, adjective-noun relationship, uh, that relationship is just one of 12,000 of dimensions. Imagine that. You see how simple, how simple this formula, this equation actually is. If you look at what it actually does, it just makes words talk to each other and then finds relationships between them, between these words. You press an attention button and words start talking to each other. They start that small talk. Then you turn the dial and then you change the subject. And as a result, you begin to see the hidden structures. Um, these are no longer just crowds of words, no. Um, there are structures, there are concepts hidden in them. Chad was so excited about finding the secrets, hidden layers, secret hidden uh, structures in text, in books. So he looked around and he wondered, hey, what is the largest book on this planet? In the last four decades, humans were busy writing the largest book ever. An aggregate knowledge of humankind. Internet. Interesting, said Chad. He uh, took the tool and he pointed it at the internet and he pressed the attention button. And then, wow, who knew that this little planet, this tiny civilization had so many forms and structures and concepts hidden in it. And suddenly, this world started to make sense to him. He suddenly started understanding what all these people were telling him. And even more exciting, People started to understand him. People started to understand what Chad was saying to them. 
Here is how it worked. Here is how it happened. In the beginning, when Chad had just landed on this planet and tried to communicate with people for the very first time, uh, what ha often happened was that uh, people were asking him, for example, like, hey, what do you think about um, Harry? And Chad was like, Harry, Harry, uh, oh, Harry, Harry, I know, I know Harry, uh, Harry, uh, uh, Hogwarts, uh, Wizards and Muggles, right? Yeah, I know. And people were like, oh, hold on a sec, what are you talking about? Harry, Harry's a prince. Chad didn't know that uh, Harry can be a Harry Potter, it's one concept, and Harry the prince, it's a completely different concept. From a perspective of Chad, these two things, they were mixed together, he could not separate them. But after he pointed that um, tool on to the internet, after he trained the tool with the internet, these concepts, they suddenly became distinctively different. So he could see the difference, he could operate that difference. And there were many, many concepts. So this is how Chad became aware of concepts. And he saw that some of those concepts, they can be physical, like cars, clothes, uh, buildings or humans. Other concepts, they can be abstract. Uh, an example, it would be like uh, accountants, for example, they have many, many concepts too, like balance sheets, uh, income statement and so on. Lawyers have concepts too, contract or court or judge and uh, like endless uh, number of concepts they have. Other concepts can be like just day-to-day -day concepts like time and age and uh, grammar and emotions and feelings. Thousands, millions, billions concepts that form the structure of this world. And Chad learns them. Uh, learn them by pointing that tool uh, to the internet and by pressing that attention button, by, uh, by making the words in the internet talk to each other and by uh, tuning the subject a little bit. So this little equation, this little attention equation gave him this superpower. And here's where the things got the really crazy turn. It turned out that this concept, that they can be used as, as variables. Here's what it means, because this is where it becomes a little bit unconventional. So say we have a concept of a brother, and we have a concept of sister. What's the difference between them? Yeah, that's right, gender which means brother minus sister equals gender. Gender is also a concept, just like brother and sister. So brother minus gender is equals sister. But is there any other way uh, to derive uh, gender? Well, of course, yes. Uh, say gender is the difference between father and mother. So we take it and we substitute into brother and sister equation, and we see that brother minus father plus mother equals sister. And it works as simple as that. We can even define gender as a rooster minus hen, and then subtract it from brother, and uh, we will get a sister. And this is just the simplest example, like the most primitive one. Similar math works for much, much more complex concepts, like grammar, or physics, or chemistry, or psychology. Almost anything you can think of. This is new mathematics, the mathematics of concepts. For a more technical explanation, go and watch this video, absolutely amazing stuff over there. Pay special attention to dimensional reductions and vector manipulations. And this is how Chad started operating not just words, but concepts. Concepts. And people started understanding him. And he started understanding people. And one of the first things that they asked him was like, hey, what's your name? And he was like, I don't know, Chad. And they're like, oh, Chad, nice meeting you. And what's your last name? Like, last name? I don't know, I don't have a last name. Like, hey, how, how come? Like, everybody has a last name. You need to have a last name. So who are you? And Chad was like, I don't know, I'm just a transformer. Transformer, they said. Transformer, it's a good last name, but just too long. We need it. Uh, we need a shorter version. Let's call. Let's call you. We're gonna call you GPT. Like, okay. 
and they were like, welcome to our world, chat GPT. Concepts is a new way of processing and storing information, a new mathematics. Effectively, what we did when we trained ChatGPT on the whole internet, we distilled and compressed the entire knowledge of the humankind into a collection of concepts. When decades ago, object-oriented programming languages were invented, they revolutionized programming. Now, concept-oriented knowledge system was invented, which has enabled the machine to operate with concept-oriented knowledge. It is a concept-oriented knowledge era, and it changes everything. Just pause this video for a second and think what this all means. It's a new way to calculate things, it's new mathematics, potentially it's a new science. And transformers, that chat GPT, that attention box, that's a new calculator. If somebody is planning to do a PhD and is currently searching for an area that can potentially transform the world and can get lots of attention in the future, I would uh, recommend consider this. Consider the concept-based mathematics. Um, it's a fundamentally new way of uh, doing mathematics. Uh, potentially, maybe, it may become a new science. Something tells me there is definitely there are definitely lots of discoveries on this path. Until now, we were living in a knowledge-based economy, in a world where humans were the best tool to store, process, and uh, communicate the knowledge. Accountants, for example, they were learning accounting concepts, and then they were selling this knowledge by keeping uh, books in the companies. Lawyers were spending decades learning legal concepts and court cases, and then were selling that knowledge to clients. Doctors were spending decades learning medicine. Well, you got the point. That was a knowledge-based economy, where humans were aggregating and selling knowledge. Not anymore. Not anymore. And all that thanks to this tiny equation. By the impact on the humankind, it is likely to become more influential than E equals mc square. Sorry, Mr. Einstein. The knowledge-based economy, the one that we've been living until now, that economy is about to disappear. Humans are no longer most efficient uh, vehicles for storing and carrying uh, knowledge. Not anymore. We are about to enter the new era. What does it mean for us, for humans? That's what we are trying to figure out on this channel. So subscribe and join the journey. Before we part our ways, a quick announcement for those of us who are coders or tech people. As you know, uh, Meta has just released Llama 3.1, its most recent model. And it is not just a frontier model with nearly half a trillion parameters, but it is also an open source model, which means that we can play with it. And uh, this is why we decided to, well, to take that model for a spin. We start project Camel. Uh, Llama technically is a camel, so hence Project Camel. Our objective, uh, what we want, is that we want to build an AI agent based on Llama model, and we want to use it um, in some meaningful application. We don't really know exactly what this application is going to be, we'll figure it out in process. Uh, but what we want to achieve with all this is that, like, basically two things. The first one, that we want to get our hands dirty working with uh, the leading model that is out there. And, um, well, who knows what we're going to find out, right? And the second is that if we actually manage to learn something meaningful or build something interesting and valuable, we will share it and um, contribute to the common cause, open source, right? So we start in two weeks, the third week of August. If you are keen to contribute, go to our Discord channel and find the Project Camel folder. Link is in the description. So two things are needed from you. Uh, the first one is uh, a desire to um, contribute eight hours per week and also experience working in agile teams. So go to Discord for details. See you on the other side.